all. And since we're such good friends, can I ask you something? <laughs> Wait, I totally realized something just now, completely out of nowhere. I feel like I'm about to see the performance of a lifetime. Well? Say, Makoto, have you been feeling down in the dumps? No energy, no spark? Huh? You think so? You know? Uh, goddamn chair. You don't have to hide it from me. I know what it's like. I've been there. And you know what I'd recommend? Hmm. This. What is it? You know? A crystal ball. Okay, and? Hmm. Just hold on to it for a second. Here, here. Completely against my will, Hero shoved the crystal ball into my hands. Well? What do you think? Nice and cold to the touch. Feels good, doesn't it? Uh, actually, yeah. Hmm. You can feel its power, can't you? Hmm. Do I feel it? How about that? It's the ancient power of our timeless Mother Earth. For serious? You see, the, that crystal ball has quite the history. It was found in the ruins of Atlantis. It is literally a priceless, one-of-a-kind artifact. This precious item grants enormous power to whoever holds it, bringing prosperity and peace of mind. He is a stereotypical stoner. That very that this very ball has known the touch of Napoleon, George Washington, even Genghis Khan. I think that's probably the single most unbelievably unbelievable thing I've ever heard. Hmm. Well, I'd like to give it to you as a present. In return, I'd like to you to come with me to a little seminar when we get out of here. And don't worry, I'll see about getting a discount on your entry fee because that's what friends do. That's really nice of you and all, but I'm not sure I'm really interested. In. How about that? That's funny, Viro. Sorry, the crystal ball has already acknowledged you as its proper owner. It wants you to stay with it, with you. It needs to stay with you. It's given itself to you. So now you keep, gotta keep your promise. You don't want to know what that thing does to Oathbreakers. <laughs> okay, I'm counting on you, pal. Refusing to take back the crystal ball, Hero hurried away. But I could hear him mumbling to himself and caught something about finally made my quota. I really I, I really hope I heard him wrong. Dill Pickles. Mm. You just unlocked the skill crystal prediction. Give yourself a pat on the back. You've earned it. I decided to go back to my room for a while. Dill Pickles. <coughs> what about Tommy Pickles? A school announcement. As such, it is officially night. Tommy Pickles. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked. Okay then. Man, I watched a lot of Rugrats when I was a kid. Everyone's in a terrible mood. I just hope nothing happens tonight. Yeah. It helped I had a little sister, but after I declined the offer to become a shrimp, the tech support lady just refused to drop the issue. Once the shrimp idea was dead, she came back suggesting I should become a crab instead. How much can one person love crustaceans? I said no, of course, and she shot back. Okay, then how about I make you extra special? You can be a crab that walks sideways and backwards. How? But how is that any better? I don't want to go sideways or backwards. I want to go forward. Yeah, she was a little demon child. I heard her annoyed side on the end of the line. Then she said, "You just don't see the splendor of the crab. Haven't you heard the tale of the tale of the crab and the monkey?" Of course, I've heard of it. You know all about it. But so what? Yeah, that's really bad. You went to a school with a girl named Starlight? No fucking way, Virobot. The crab beats the monkey, but it's just some legend. Hardly relevant to our greed-obsessed modern society. Sure, monkeys still show up in the movies and stuff from time to time, but not crabs. Monkey-themed clothes are sweeping the fashion world, but the crab doesn't stand a chance, right? What I'm saying is crabs have no place in today's light-speed world. Do your market research, lady. Yeah, which is why I chose the always popular bear image. And that's the secret origin story of Monokuma. <laughs> Especially when they have knives. Good morning, everybody. Get ready. I hate you, Monokuma. 
I better go to the dining hall and talk to the others about it one more time. He said he needed to do something about Sakura. Wah! Huh? Was that someone screaming? I think it came from the dining hall. Oh no. We have a dead body. Ah, uh, Makoto, we got a big problem, man. Well, what's wrong? Uh, Look! Hero's finger, uh, Hero's finger shook as he pointed. Hina! Hina! Are you okay? What happened? She, she killed her. Genocide Jill killed Hina! You gotta be kidding! No, 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 she's not dead. Open your eyes, no way she's dead. Well, why, what happened? Uh, well, Toka and Hina, just all of a sudden they were yelling and then they knocked the pepper off the table and that led to a sneeze. Her giant balloons are a little too perfect, aren't they? I might be flat, but at least mine are real. Look at my shapely collarbone. Doesn't it just totally set you on fire? Totally not adorable. That sounds pretty dope, Virobot. Anyway, you totally non-adorable boys just get her out of my sight, okay? Or else. I'll start cutting and cutting and cutting and indulging myself for who knows how long. Uh, okay, then. Let's get Hina to the nurse's office. Come on, hero. Help me. Uh, um. Sure, sure thing. <laughs> wee -woo, wee -woo. <laughs> Kia -yi -yi. Genocide Jack's abrasive laugh chased us out of the hallway as we carried Hina. Why do they keep calling her Genocide Jack? That's not her name. By the time I finished taking care of Hina's injury in the nurse's office, she seemed to have finally regained her composure. Sorry. But thank you? Are you sure you're feeling better? Yeah. It really was just a scratch. <laughs> but still, that was super close. If I hadn't yelled out, you'd be dead right now. It's all thanks to me, you know. Yes, well, a thousand thank yous to you, sir. <laughs> so sarcastic. That just makes you sound even more hostile. Yeah. It's a translation. Hey, Hino, what the heck happened? Okay, um, we were we just got into a fight, and I lost my temper and flew off the handle. Let me guess. The fight was because of Sakura? But... At first, I tried to just ignore it, but if you, if you let... If you let jerk buttholes get to you all the time, you'll never have time left to live your life. Jerk buttholes is a good one. But she wouldn't let it go, so I just, without thinking about it, I felt like I wanted to punch her like a dozen times. For serious. A dozen punches isn't really without thinking. And when things got out of hand, Genocide Jack got let loose, right? Sorry. It's my own fault, but I just couldn't take it anymore. Because, because... Because she was saying all these terrible things about my friend, you know? Before I knew it, Hina's eyes started welling up with tears. And just as the tears were on the brink of spilling over, the door to the nurse's office burst open. I thought the door was going to fly off its hinges. And there she stood before us. Hina. Hina. Huh? Sa Sakura. Ugh. You're hurt. What happened? Huh? Oh, no, nothing. It's not a big deal. Hey! Jackal and Hyde. Jackal and Hyde, yeah. So she's got two personalities just like that, Missy. And whenever she sneezes, she transitions. Makoto, Hiro, what's the meaning of this? It, it wasn't me. It was Genocide Jill. It's all that demented murderous fiend's fault. Grrr. Damn. To hurt Hina. Damn you! To leave me alone, but hurt her. What is this? What is this? Ah! I, I'm okay, really. It's just a scratch. Uh, no forgiveness. Unforgivable. I can't forgive this. I can't forget. She's just like a super, like a Street Fighter character. I can't forgive them. Uh, yeah! Uh, Hero, if you want to hate someone, hate me. If you want to hurt someone, hurt me. What, what? I, I, I don't hate you exactly. I can't Why? Somebody save me. Hero nearly tripped over himself as he ran screaming out of the nurse's office. But just a second later, what's going on? Hey. What's all this what's all this noise about? 
Kyoko stood in the doorway of the nurse's office, taking Hiro's spot in the room. It would seem... Yeah. I gather that something happened. Ki Kyoko, please. You have to stop Sakura. Wait. You don't need to stop me. I'm okay. I'm not doing... Uh, I'm not going to do anything. I just... I'm drawing a line right here and now. Drawing a line? Goodbye. Goodbye. Wait, Sakura! Hina sprang into action, leaving the nurse's office to chase after Sakura. The only ones left were... Uh, um, Kyoko? Are you still mad? Yeah, I figured. That's fine. It's fine. Huh? Whew. About that issue we discussed earlier, it doesn't matter anymore. Then, do you forgive me for not being able to talk to about it? In other words... You could have told me about Sakura and Monokuma fighting, but you stayed quiet. You were only thinking of Sakura, and that's why you didn't tell me, right? You didn't want to confuse everyone until you could talk to her and be sure of what you saw. That's what you were thinking, and that's why you didn't tell me, right? Y yeah. <laughs> to think like that... I wouldn't have expected, I wouldn't have expected such arrogance from you. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected such arrogance from you. What? Because... Because ultimately, that means you don't trust me. No, no, that's not it. But if that's how you feel, I can't really change your mind. I'm sorry. That's fine. It's fine. I've already forgotten about it. Besides, and I... I may have overreacted. Huh? Anyway. Anyways, it's over and done with. Like I said, let's just forget about it. Okay, thank you. Whew. What is it you want to talk to me about? Indeed. Actually, I'd like you to come somewhere with me. I have business there. Where? So... Just come with me and you'll find out. I, I guess, but... Shall we go? Well then, shall we get going? With her typical indifference, Kyoko turned and walked out away, setting a brisk pace. Ah, Kyoko. I hurried to catch up to her. Sus. She walked ahead in silence, and in silence I chased her. And eventually we arrived. The dressing room? So the something else you mentioned. Indeed. That's right. It has to do with alter ego. But you said we didn't need alter ego anymore. Wrong. I didn't say we didn't need him. I just said he had done his job. Besides, it's not that needs alter. It's not us that needs alter ego. He has business with us. Huh? Right. Alter ego asked me to bring others to come see him. Apparently he has something he wants to ask us. Alter Ego wants to ask us something? Uh. Hello. Okay. Oh, oh, um. So it's just the two of you, Kyoko and Makoto? Kyoko's fingers glided across the keyboard. Is two not enough? Uh. No, it's okay. Two should be plenty. But what is it he wants to ask us? Indeed. Let's find out, shall we? Kyoko typed in the question. What did you want to ask us? So, um, oh yeah, so I'd like to take me I'd like you to take me somewhere where you can connect me to the school network. What? What? Kyoko and I quickly glanced at each other. She replied, Why? <laughs> well, um, you said my job was done, right? But to just stop here saying I've finished my work. But I don't want that. I want to keep I want to keep being helpful to everyone. I want to work as hard as everyone else so that we can all get out of here. That's right. That's what Master would want, too. So, to help everyone else, to solve the mystery of the school. That's right. The only way I can help is if you connect me to this school's network. But, but if you did that, that's basically suicide. I'm positive the Mastermind would find out about it. They'd find you, and they'd... You agree, right, Kyoko? So. I realize how dangerous it could be. But still, I have to do this. But I'm scared, but I can handle it. I don't really understand why, but, but still, when I think about everyone else, my courage starts to grow. You may think I'm just some inhuman AI, but it's true. So, it's okay. I'm gonna do my best. If it's for the sake of everyone else, I won't be afraid. I couldn't help but get lost in that voice. It was just too committed, too admirable too fragile. Hey. You remember what you asked before, Makoto? 
You asked what the difference is between a person and a program, right? Y yeah. Certainly. When I talk to alter ego, I don't know. I have no idea how to answer that question. I think maybe th that's a question even the program's creator can't answer. But I can say this. Correct. There's no question that alter ego is our friend. Kyoko. I... To be honest, I don't... I didn't want alter ego to push himself anymore. Because if we take any more risks, the mastermind really will notice it. But... Makoto. Let's do it, Makoto. Let's connect alter ego to the network. But, but... Hey. He's our friend, so I want to take his feelings into consideration. And he says that he wants to fight alongside his friends. No. If you were in his place, could you just sit by and do nothing in this situation? If you saw everyone else fighting and doing their best, could you just look the other way? Or would you stand up? Stand up tall next to everyone else and tell them you're their friends. Or their friend. So, um, hey, are you guys fighting? If it's about me, please don't. I I want to be able to say, I know I can do this. Leave it to me. So please, let me try. Listen. And besides, there's only one place the master and men might not notice. One place. That's right. Remember, there's another place besides here where there's no surveillance camera. A room without a surveillance camera. That's it, the secret room you told me about. I definitely remember there was no surveillance camera in there. Indeed. And I do believe you can connect to the network from there. I remember seeing an Ethernet port on the wall. However, However, just because there's no camera there doesn't mean there's no danger. There's no way to be sure that the Mastermind isn't monitoring the network somehow. We'll also have to move Alter Ego and the Mastermind may spot us going into the secret room. If they pick up on any of this, then it's all over. You're right. That's what we have to do. But, but despite all that, I still think we need to try. Correct. Because that's our best chance of finding any new clues. Kyoko, in that case, will you let me carry him? There's no way you could hide him with what you're wearing, right? So let me do it. It's true. Okay, then. I'll leave it to you. Thank you. So then. Then let's get started. It's going to be a little cramped for you, Alter Ego. Bear with us, okay? We started packing him up right away. I closed the laptop and stuffed it underneath my jacket. <laughs> ah ha ha. It tickles. Shh, you can't talk right now. We're going to move you to another room. Until we get there, you have to be absolutely silent, okay? Understood. Your command has been implemented. Good, good. To have him react like a machine like that all of a sudden, I don't know how to react. Makoto. In the secret room, there were, are a bunch of different cables in one of the desk drawers, so there might be a network cable in there. However, Assuming the mastermind hasn't taken it already, well, all we can do is go and check for ourselves. It's true. Agreed. Let's... Head to the secret room. We're going to go there in the middle of the day. That seems suspicious. In the middle of the freaking day. Hey, Makoto. Why? Are you sure all the documents are gone? I refuse to believe you. Go ahead and check again. What? Listen to me. Just hurry up and go. And to make sure you don't run off, I'm going to wait right here. Oh, I get it. She's acting. She was so forceful, I thought I'd made her mad again somehow. Just a second. Why are you just standing there? Hurry up and go. Well, okay. Okay, I'm going. So then. And be thorough. I'm counting on you. Okay, first we have to find a network cable. According to Kyoko, there should be a bunch of cables in this drawer. Hmm. Found it. This is a network cable, right? Now we just have to connect Alter Ego. I immediately go to work. I pulled out the laptop and connected to the e Ethernet port with the cable. And that should do it. Um, that's right. Yeah, I think it worked. Please. Just leave the rest of me. I swear I'll find something. I might even be able to connect to the outside world if I can. I'll see if I can call for help. So, so please just wait a while longer. I'm just hold tight and put your faith in me. As I was about to leave, I decided to leave without 
to leave him with one last thing. No matter what, we're gonna get out of here. You and all the rest of us as friends. Huh? Friends? Even me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Makoto. Yeah, horseshoe crabs are cool looking. Makoto. How'd it go? Well, it went okay, but all the um, documents were gone, just like I told you. My reply was an unintentional mix of acting and real feelings. Correct. I see. Then there's nothing left for us here. Goodbye. Goodbye. Before I knew it, Kyoko was walking away. She wasn't acting anymore. That much was for sure. Ah, uh, Kyoko. What? Yes. Um, so we're just going to split Why up? Of course. I have no reason to stay with you at this point. Well, maybe. But isn't that a little too direct? <sighs> Should I hesitate and fumble for something to say? You're so high maintenance. But that's not what I meant. I just had more I wanted to talk about to you about. Like, what are you going to do about Sakura? It's true. Well, something has to be done. It's true. However. But the way things are right now, there's no way to persuade anyone. They don't have the mind to listen. Then what should we do? So... If we could find some new clue, then we should, would likely change the situation. It's all we can hope for right now. Which, which is why Alter Ego... Correct. All we can do is wait and believe in our friends. You're right. That's our only option. We parted ways and I head back to my room. I'm kind of tired. So I laid down in bed. Maybe it was because of the stress of moving alter ego, but I was way more tired than I realized. So before long at all. I completely dozed off. Huh? The sharp sound of the doorbell pierced my sleepy haze and it pulled me back to the real world. Makoto. Makoto, get out here. Kyoko, what's going on? Indeed. Hina just came to see me and she was white as a ghost. It sounds like something has happened. What? As soon as I heard those words, my heart started to beat a little faster. I suddenly found myself wide awake. She said for us to come to the rec room. The rec room. Okay, let's hurry. Oh no. No. I can't get the door open. Is it locked? Anyway. I better hear what Hina has to say. <laughs> Makoto, Kyoko, Hina, what's wrong? So something's not right. In the rec room. What's inside? There was a window on the rec room door and I hurried to look inside. And what I did... Sakura. Is she unconscious? She's sitting up at the chair like she's bowing her head. Hey. What's going on? Did something happen to her? Huh? I was just walking past and I happened to notice her through the window. But I couldn't get the door open. I tried knocking. I tried calling her name. But she wouldn't respond. So what should we do? What are we going to do? Anyway. First of all, we need to get into that room. But the door is locked, right? If we break in, we'll be violating school regulations. Listen to me. We're going to force our way in. I just said Wrong. the door isn't locked. It's not locked because the rec room doesn't have a lock. Huh? Then why? It, it feels like the door is pressing up against something inside the room. Is it the chair? Chair? In other words, Either way, the door isn't locked, which means as far as I can tell, the rule doesn't apply. Then there's no problem if we break in. Indeed. Let's smash the window. That should be the fastest way. 